All right, so now I've got a couple demonstrations and Jordan asked this question before about Java web tokens. And I realized that they are very much like SAML. In fact, I have used them before. So let's start with SAML. And I think I'll just demonstrate this. And in fact, I added it to the class as an extra credit project. This is one of my old ones, which I had removed, but I realized it's pretty good and it's not included in the Web Security Academy. So I put it back in as extra credit. If you go to 129S and the projects, I added in this 520 SAML. And I'm going to demonstrate it because it's pretty fun. So, of course, we're using Burp. So you bring up your Burp. Uh, let me clean off this old stuff. Okay, so here's my Burp, and I've got the web, the Burp browser here. Okay, and so I start at SAML. Sham lol .samsclass.info. And the instructions are all in that project, but I think I've pretty much got it memorized by now. So when you go there, it will redirect to here. So this is security assertion markup language. This is a way to send a blob of data to a server to make a security assertion, a security assertion like I am logged in as this user. And then it's just a way to transmit that data to the server. But this is how it's normally used. And it ties into everything we've been talking about today in the lecture. Um, when you would have an authentication provider that is different than your service provider. For example, you are a website running a game or something, and you do login by Facebook. So here I am at SP. This is the service provider that's going to show me a picture of a kitten, but I'm not logged in. So when I log in, I move over to the identity provider, which is a different server. And now I give it a username and password and one it's user one and PWD is the account I have to play with PWD. Okay, so now I log in. Okay, and I'm logged in as user one, but you have to be admin to win this game. Now, here's the uh, HTTP history in Burp. So first I went to the service provider to load a page and then I was sent to the identity provider and let me make this a little wider and this, all right. And now I've sent in a username and password here. So let's see which one of these set up the username and password. I think it was this post. SSO service is um, single sign-on service, which is the default name of this. This is using a standard package to do SAML. This took me a whole week to do a couple of years ago. I took an existing SAML, um, standard service, and I hacked it to add a vulnerability, which had been removed in most modern versions. But anyway, the point is, this is where it sent up the username and password. You see it down here, sent username and username and password being sent to the server in this request, the one that says login user pass, this one. All right, so it sent the username and password to the server, and the server sent a response and that response includes this giant thing called a SAML response. And there it is. And this is what you're going to remember and send back to the server. So that's when then you do a post sending up the SAML response. And that SAML response is just base64 encoded data and you can see it right here in this little inspector pane, decoded from base64. If you highlight some of this, there, you have to get the, there. If you get the right amount of it highlighted to where it's a valid base64, this will show you what's there. It's just XML encoded in base64. And you can see SAML response, destination equals SAMS class. If I highlight more and more and more of it, it'll show you more and more of the, um, Result, let's see. All right, uh, let's see if I can get out of any more, like maybe this. There we go. You see destination and so on. So that's what this junk is. This giant blob of data is a SAML response. Now, in order to understand it better, you need to have a plugin. And the plugin you get from Extender. And the plugin is, um, 
uh, SAML hacker or something like that. Let's see, SAML Raider. So you add plugins to your BERT here. There's a ton of them and they're very good. And you just pick one off the list and then you install it down here. I've already installed it, but it's very easy. These are plugins just like browser plugins you'd put in Firefox. You put plugins in um, BERT. And now if you go to view SAML traffic, which was here, proxy history, that's why they're purple. The purple ones are ones you can analyze with the plugin. So if you go here, you can see this is the raw SAML response and you can choose the extension here and analyze it with SAML Raider. And SAML Raider now can do things like perform attacks on SAML. And if you go to the bottom, which I'm having trouble getting to on my little screen here, um, you can see the data down here um, exposed. It's decoded the data from Base64 and made it readable down here. And if you go to this SAML message info, it even formats it pretty nicely. So you can see all the stuff that's in here. So there's things in here like signatures, long signatures. These are cryptographic signatures, which verify that the data is in fact authentic. That's why this process is pretty secure if it's implemented correctly. You have a blob of data that has things, by the way, at the bottom is the assertion and the assertion is my username and password. Here's my user, um, last name, first name, mail, user ID. There's my user ID name, user one. So this assertion is I have logged in as user one. And there are those big blobs of cryptographic data, cryptographic signatures, meaning that you really have high security that this is true. Um, oh, SAML is quite common. It's one of the big ones. And uh, it's used, for example, by Canvas. You can watch it go by. It's also used by our grading system. Um, so, um, however, when SAML was fairly new, it is XML. Yes, SAML is just XML. That's why the ML is. It's security assertion markup language, just like HTML is uh, HTTP markup language. It's I'm not, and and but it's, in order to transmit it, it's Base64 encoded XML. Now the point is, it's it's perfectly strong because of the cryptographic signatures. The problem is it is fairly common that the identity provider is somebody professional like Facebook that implements this correctly, but the service provider is just somebody writing a game or a blog or something. And they often don't correctly write their code. So it doesn't actually correctly verify the signatures. This is fairly common because you're going from like a big professional company to a small amateur company. So even though the protocol could be secure, it's often implemented insecurely. And that's what's gonna happen here. So the username is there. Now we can't modify anything about this response right now because this is the HTTP history. In order to modify it, we have to catch it with the intercept. So let's go back to here, log out and log in again and put in the username and password, user one and PWD. I'm ready to log in, but I haven't hit the button yet. Now I go here, proxy, intercept, and I turn on intercept. Now I log in. Now the first request is not the SAML data. So I forward that one. But the next one is the SAML data. And see, here it is with all this SAML information. And now I could perform attacks. So the simplest attack is just alter this data. So suppose it's not really verifying the certificate at all. If that's true, then I could just change the name down here. So I need to find the name and the name is user one. I can use this search engine to find it. And there it is, uh, user one. And I can click here and go to write with the keyboard to make sure I'm getting the right one. Yeah, that's where the name is. So I want it to be admin. So I'm gonna just change this to admin. And I'm going to change it to demo, by the way. I'm using demo instead of admin. Uh, so I can demonstrate this without giving away the flag. So I put in demo to change my name. And now I let it go through by turning off intercept. And now if I go back to the browser, we can see what happened. And what happened is I got busted. Uh, it said um, reference validation failed. So it is not ignoring the signature. It noticed that the signature does not prove that my name is demo. So apparently 
this site is not stupid enough to fall for that. So let's try again. If I log out and get ready to log in again with user one and PWD. Okay, now I'm gonna go uh, turn intercept on again and log in again. And this is the preliminary page, which I forward away and whoa, oh, so, oh, I must have typed it wrong. Okay, fine. All right, uh, PWD, PWD. Let's try this. Turn intercept on, log in, forward. All right, something's not working. Let me turn this off. Let's go um, back to Sam. User one, yeah. Oh, I spelled user one wrong. Thank you. So I'm just going to go to Sam, LOL. Uh, Sam's class. Okay. Get back to the, there we are. Now I'm ready to log in. Okay. User one, U-S-E-R one and P-W-D. Okay. Now I turn on intercept and log in. Forward the first one. And now I got this one. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove the signatures entirely, which is the kind of attack we've been talking about all along. Maybe if the signature is just missing, that will be interpreted as a good signature because of flaws in the logic. <coughs> if you remove the signature, it cleans this up a lot. It makes it a lot smaller. And now it's pretty easy to catch. This is the UID user one. So now if I change this to a different name like demo, whoa, okay, demo. Okay, and then turn this off. Now I succeeded. So you don't get the flag with demo, but if you did that with admin, you would get the flag. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you is this uh, SAML demonstration. And uh, that's, okay, that's, that's an attack that uh, will get you in. If there's a flaw, of course, in how they're implementing it. If it's correctly implemented, it can be plenty secure. It has a nice, you know, um, a uh, cryptographic signature, which can be strong. And another thing is there's a web page here, uh, and I'll put this in the chat in case anybody wants it. There's a page just teaching you about JSON web tokens, which do essentially the same thing. Just another way to do the same thing. And uh, there's a very nice little uh, pamphlet here, 10 or 12 pages long. And here it explains what a JSON web token is. It's got a header, which tells you the algorithm. That's why when I saw this, I knew I'd seen this before. I've done this in Capture the Flag contest. Algorithm HS256 JWT is, Java, is JSON web token. It has a header, which specifies the algorithm, then a payload, which contains things like your login name, admin equals true. That's the security assertion. And then a signature, which is just an HMAC SHA-256, a big blob of base 64 junk which would be the cryptographic signature proving that this stuff is accurate. So it, it just like that SAML, and it turns out that there are a ton of ways this can go wrong. It's a whole bunch of attacks, like it might just fail to validate the signature, just like the one we just saw. There's an algorithm called none, which has no signature required. So you might be able to just take, um, copy somebody else's JSON web token, change this to admin and change the algorithm to none. And the server might accept a none algorithm and a none algorithm means no signature. Um, you might be able, there uh, were certain HMAC keys that are weak and you can brute force them. Sometimes you can even go to some of these fields and have command injection, pass reversal, SQL injection, and so on. Because all this data here is like the header of a web page. It could in principle be processed at the server in unsafe ways. So anyway, I haven't made a lab with this JWT but there it is. And I didn't see um, either of these in the Web Security Academy right now. So I decided I'd put that project back in. Anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you about that. And I'm going to stop this video and make another one with the Web Security Academy stuff. So we stop.